Have you ever pondered the reliability of linguistic methods in tracing human history? It's a question that may seem daunting at first, but it's the cornerstone of our understanding of human migration and history. Linguistic methods, at their core, are tools to decipher the tangled web of languages and dialects, and their evolution over millennia. They are the keys that unlock the secrets of our past, painting a vivid picture of human journeys and cultural exchanges. But like any other scientific method, they are not without their flaws. Our focus today is on one such method, Greenberg's mass comparison method. This method, developed by the renowned linguist Joseph Greenberg, is a controversial approach to language classification. It's based on the comparison of words and grammatical structures across a wide range of languages, with the aim of tracing their common roots and relationships. For example, consider the four major language families of Africa, Afroasiatic, Niger-Congo, Nilo-Saharan, and Khoisan. Greenberg's mass comparison method was instrumental in classifying these languages, shedding light on the complex tapestry of linguistic diversity on the continent. But how reliable are these classifications? Can we truly trust the results derived from this method? The reliability of linguistic methods is not just an academic question. It has real-world implications. It influences how we perceive cultural identities, how we understand the movements of our ancestors, and how we interpret the development of human societies. It's a question that requires us to scrutinize, to question, and to delve deeper into the intricate world of linguistics. So, as we embark on this journey of exploration, we must equip ourselves with a critical eye and an open mind. We must be ready to challenge our assumptions, to question established theories, and to embrace the complexities of language evolution. Now let's delve deeper into the intriguing world of linguistic methods and their reliability. Joseph Greenberg, a renowned linguist, developed a controversial method known as the mass comparison. This method lives up to its name by comparing a massive number of languages simultaneously, hunting for shared features. Greenberg believed that by doing this he could uncover deep, previously unrecognized relationships between languages. His method was particularly applied in Africa, where he classified the continent's languages into four major families, Afroasiatic, Niger-Congo, Nilo-Saharan, and Khoisan. The essence of Greenberg's method is to find similarities across languages, from phonetics to vocabulary, and even grammatical structures. The intention is to trace back these languages to their common roots, creating a linguistic map of sorts. This approach has been revolutionary, providing a new perspective on how we understand the history and evolution of languages, particularly in Africa. Sounds simple, right? But Greenberg's method has its fair share of criticisms and limitations. So what's the problem with Greenberg's method? Why has it sparked such heated debates in the field of linguistics? Well, let's delve into the main criticisms. Firstly, Greenberg's method has been criticized for lacking a systematic approach. Language as we know is a complex system with countless variables and nuances. Greenberg's method however seems to oversimplify this complexity, failing to provide a consistent and systematic approach to comparing languages. It's been likened to comparing apples to oranges, not considering the intricate details that make each language unique. Secondly, his method is said to rely heavily on intuition. Now intuition isn't inherently bad. However, in scientific fields such as linguistics, relying too heavily on intuition can lead to subjective interpretations and potential inaccuracies. This is because intuition, by its very nature, is personal and not universally applicable. So, what may seem like a logical comparison to one person may not hold water to another. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, Greenberg's method does not provide conclusive evidence of language relationships. It makes broad assertions about language families such as Afro-Asiatic, Niger-Congo, Nilo-Saharan, and Khoisan without providing solid, indisputable evidence to back up these claims. For instance, it groups languages together based on similarities in vocabulary and grammar, but these similarities could be coincidental or result from language contact, not necessarily indicating a shared ancestry. Lastly, critics argue that Greenberg's method is not replicable. In science, a key principle is that experiments should be replicable to ensure their validity. However, because Greenberg's method relies so heavily on intuition, it becomes almost impossible for other linguists to replicate his findings exactly, further casting doubt on their accuracy. These criticisms, though substantial, do not necessarily invalidate Greenberg's method. They merely point out its limitations. And while these limitations are significant, they also provide a valuable opportunity for further exploration and refinement in the field of linguistic comparison. 
Every method has its limits and Greenberg's mass comparison is no exception. Just like a seasoned detective, Greenberg sought clues in the vast linguistic landscape, but sometimes the trail can lead you astray. One of the primary limitations of Greenberg's method is its struggle with languages that have undergone significant change. It's like trying to trace your family tree using only your distant cousin's appearance. Over time languages evolve, they borrow words from other languages and they create new ones. For example in the Niger-Congo family the Bantu languages have borrowed heavily from their neighbors. This can make it challenging to identify the original linguistic roots and can lead to misinterpretations. Another challenge is that Greenberg's method may produce false positives. Imagine you're trying to find a needle in a haystack. You see something glinting in the sun and rush towards it, only to find out it's a piece of straw. Similarly, Greenberg's method might suggest a relationship between languages where none exists. This is because many languages share common features like the use of prefixes or suffixes, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're related. It's like assuming two people are siblings just because they both have brown hair. It's a common feature but it doesn't guarantee a relationship. These limitations become even more pronounced when we consider the vast linguistic diversity of Africa with its Afroasiatic, Niger-Congo, Nilo-Saharan, and Khoisan language families. The method can provide some interesting insights but must be taken with a grain of salt. Greenberg's mass comparison is a tool, and like all tools, it has its strengths and weaknesses. It's a starting point, a way to sift through the complexity and find potential connections. But it's not infallible. And it's not the final word. These limitations remind us that while Greenberg's method can provide interesting insights, it should be used with caution. Because in the end it's not about finding the right answer, it's about understanding the journey that languages have taken through time and across continents. Greenberg's method has been particularly influential in studying African languages. Indeed it's his groundbreaking work on African languages that has brought him the most recognition and also the most debate. Let's start with the Afroasiatic languages. Greenberg's method led him to propose a vast language family, encompassing languages as diverse as Arabic, Hebrew, Amharic, and Somali. However, this has sparked controversy. Critics argue that the similarities he identified could be due to borrowing or convergence, not shared ancestry. Yet despite these criticisms, the Afroasiatic language family is widely accepted today, demonstrating the enduring influence of Greenberg's approach. Turning to the Niger-Congo languages, Greenberg's method again led him to propose a large language family. This time, however, the controversy was even greater. Critics pointed out that his method doesn't adequately distinguish between inherited features and borrowed ones, leading to potential overestimation of linguistic relationships. Despite this, his classification of Niger-Congo languages remains influential, though it is far from uncontested. When it comes to the Nilo-Saharan languages, the controversy continues. Greenberg's method led him to group together languages from the Nile Valley to Lake Chad, a proposal that has been met with considerable skepticism. The Nilo-Saharan language family remains one of the most disputed proposals in African linguistics, illustrating the limitations of his method. Finally, in the case of the Khoisan languages, Greenberg's method led him to propose a language family that is now largely rejected. His grouping of the click languages of Southern Africa into a single family has been criticized for being based on a single, potentially misleading feature. This case underscores the potential pitfalls of Greenberg's method. As we can see, the application of Greenberg's method in Africa has been both enlightening and contentious. It has sparked debates, challenged assumptions, and shaped our understanding of African languages. However, it has also highlighted the limitations and potential pitfalls of the mass comparison method in linguistics. So, what can we take away from our exploration of Greenberg's method and its reliability? Well, we've dissected the method's criticisms, underlining its inherent shortcomings. We've learned how Greenberg's mass comparison technique, while revolutionary, is not without its limitations, primarily due to its lack of rigorous testing and its reliance on subjective interpretation. We've also delved into the method's controversial application within the diverse linguistic tapestry of Africa. From the Afroasiatic languages of the North, to the Niger-Congo languages of the West, the Nilo-Saharan languages of the East, and the Khoisan languages of the South, Greenberg's method has sparked intense debates and polarizing views. These criticisms and limitations, however, do not entirely invalidate Greenberg's instead, they highlight the complexities of language study and the need for continuous refinement in our linguistic methods. 
In the end, while Greenberg's method is far from perfect, it continues to spark debate, challenge assumptions, and drive our understanding of human history forward. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our latest videos.